Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. I wanted to talk about mechanical clocks again today because I thought it was kind of fun and fascinating to realize that with almost all the mechanical clocks out there, you're going to have one of two ways that they get their power, and you're going to have one of two ways that you regulate them or, you know, decide or, you know, make them go faster or slower. OK, so uh, let's first talk about power. So uh, with this clock and this clock here, they have a mainspring and that mainspring is wound into a coil inside what's called a barrel. And uh, as that uncoils, that provides the power that makes all this little mechanism run. So when you think of a spring, you might be thinking of something like this. OK, <laughs> we love these things. But the spring inside there is really not like this one at all. It doesn't really retain that shape at all. Uh, the, the spring, the main spring inside this this clock here and, and this one over here and even inside you know this mechanical watch is kind of a straight piece of metal that's wound up into a coil and then put inside that barrel for safekeeping and then it unwinds and you want it to unwind because that's where the power comes from so here's like you know here's a here's a tape measure and as i wind this up it tends to retain that shape because I've, I've had it sitting around for a long time so it's just going to always be kind of that same that same shape but uh, compare that to something like, oh, this, this kind of a tape measure, OK, with the, with the metal here. And this, again, is, uh, has a tendency to, to extend out flat right? like that, OK? So imagine that uh, a piece of metal similar to this is wound up inside the mainspring of one of these clocks, OK? So I'm just going to wind out a little, little piece of this metal here. And now what happens, I've got this coil all wound up. And uh, what happens if I let go? Okay. Not advisable, kind of dangerous and uh, kind of a mess. But th that's what the mainspring is trying to do inside these clocks and inside this, this watch. It, it, it's trying to unwind and, and go flat again. So again, you want it to unwind. But you want it to be controlled. You want it to be contained inside that barrel and you want it to go at a very specific speed because that unwinding is driving all this other mechanism. And ultimately, the goal uh, is to ha have all this mechanics turn two shafts here or, you know, in the case of this watch, three shafts, uh, one for the hour hand, one for the minute hand and here a second hand. OK, and those shafts are built so that uh, there's one inside the other. And so on here, you know, the hour hand shaft uh, that rotates once every 12 hours. So that's where you get that rotation of the, you know, the, the movement of the hour hand one time around every 12 hours. And then the minute hand, again, is geared to make one revolution every every hour. And so every hour that, that the hand goes around and then, of course, with the second hand, that would be geared so that it uh, makes one revolution every minute. Same over here, except again, it doesn't have a second hand. And uh, so it's the unwinding that makes that happen. And uh, well, now, now before I go on, let's talk about the power to uh, most of the other kinds of mechanical clocks out there. It comes from gravity. So you'll have a weight and a chain or with the nice grandfather clocks, maybe a cable. So I'm going to demonstrate this. <laughs> I'm afraid this uh, cuckoo clock is not uh, not working right now. I don't even know if I have all the parts somewhere tucked away in bins or something. But um, this is this is the kind of chain it has. There's a little hook on the end. And usually the weight that's on one of these cuckoo clocks is is a, a nice metal piece that's shaped like a pine cone or something. And they look really cool. So I'm not going to put one of those on here, but I will just take something that weighs about the same this wrench here. So what happens is you, you hook that up and then inside the clock, this chain wraps around a gear. OK, and so as gravity pulls down on this weight, it's going to make that gear rotate. And again, you want that gear to turn, but you want it to turn at a very well regulated speed. Uh, if gravity had its way, it would just you know drop and within a, a second or two, it'd be all the way down to the ground. But uh, with this cuckoo clock, I think it's about a day and a half movement there. So you want it to take uh, over a day for this thing to eventually fall all the way down. And then you pull the chain and reset it and keep going like that. And with the, some of the fancy grandfather clocks, you know, they got the nice 
cylinder, the brass cylinder weights, you know, and, and for some of those, it takes seven or eight days for that to make its way all the way down. And then you wind it back up again. And that's where it gets the energy. It's gravity, but it's, uh, again, you're regulating it so that that gear, where this, uh, where this chain wraps around that gear, is turning very, very slowly, okay? So that's where you get the power. Now, how do you regulate how fast it goes? Okay, so sometimes you have like this, you have a pendulum, and as that pendulum ticks back and forth, that is uh, preventing, preventing this mainspring from unwinding too quickly. Because all this mechanism finally leads up here to what's called an escapement. And that's where that little tick tock sound comes from as that goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so we're slowing that down. If I took the weight off of this pendulum, it would go much faster, but that's too fast. So the weight is on there and then you regulate if the weight is lower or higher. So let me go back to this example of the chain with the wrench here. Okay. So I'm going to show you how, uh, how the pendulum works here. If I take this weight here and I have a, a long chain, okay, and I start it here and I let go, you can see it's going back and forth, okay? If I take the same weight and now I just shorten the length of the chain, okay, and now I let it go back and forth, you see it goes a, a little bit faster, okay? And the same principle is at work here with this pendulum. Okay, so if the clock is running too fast, I want it to go slow, so I lower the weight on the pendulum. Lower means slower, and as I raise the weight on the pendulum, I raise the speed at which the clock is going. So with a clock like this, with just a little pendulum, or maybe there's like a wall version of this with kind of a, a longer pendulum, but still with a weight there, or of course, with the, with the nice grandfather clocks where they have the very ornate pendulums uh, uh, and the, the, the weight is you know, nice polished uh, brass on there. Uh, there. There's always going to be a little nut or a little something uh, at the bottom of that that allows you to change the position of the weight on that rod. So again, if it's running a little too fast, lower the weight, it'll slow it down. Running too slow, move it back up. And so that's that's one of the things that people maybe don't like about mechanical clocks is uh, they, they don't have the patience to uh, keep adjusting that. Usually, you know, once you get it adjusted uh, just once, as long as the clock stays in a, in a nice stable place, um, it, it'll keep the same amount of time. Just make sure you, you wind it on a regular basis and, and you'll do fine. But, you know, some people just... Uh, they don't want to bother with that. You put a double A battery in a quartz clock and it just runs and you don't have to worry about it getting too far ahead or, or too slow because that's just a whole different way to run a clock. So uh, the pendulum, again, is one way to regulate how fast the clock is going. And the other way that uh, this clock happens to employ and also this mechanical watch is it has what's called a balance wheel with a hairspring. Now in this one, there's, um, there's a little place where I can put in a tiny screwdriver and uh, either turn this little rod clockwise or counterclockwise, and that um, affects the hairspring, which then allows that little escapement mechanism, the balance wheel, to turn back and forth. It rotates back and forth faster or slower. So the same idea as the pendulum, just a different way of doing it with the balance wheel that's rotating back and forth. And again, the energy is coming from the mainspring here to keep that going. This uh, clock happens to have chimes on it as well. So uh, it actually has three places where you can put in the key to wind it up. And one of those in the middle, that's for the main you know, clock mechanism. And then the other two on the ends uh, are for the chimes. One of them is just for the hourly chimes, and the other one kind of does the little melodies that it plays every quarter hour. But again, three mainsprings in here, one in here, and uh, this doesn't have a mainspring because if this were working properly, it would use a weight on the chain to keep it going. So that's just kind of fun. It's, it's amazing to me that on something like a big grandfather clock, if you get really close and look up, uh, look at the grandfather clock, sometimes the, the mechanical part of it is not much bigger than this, even though it's a nice, beautiful case and big chimes and big, big, big shiny brass. But sometimes the, the mechanism is really not that big. This one has a kind of an impressive little box with the mechanism because it has all that chime stuff in it. And uh, again, th this is this is smaller still. This is an old, old clock. And then, of course, when they put that kind of stuff in watches, very impressive 
with how they've miniaturized all of that. This is uh, this is history. Uh, this this is a, basically a design that's been around for hundreds of years, adapted to different sizes and different purposes. And the wristwatch uh, is kind of the ultimate expression of how that wonderful mechanical engineering for timekeeping has been miniaturized and uh, you know put inside a little something you can wear. And of course with the balance wheel and that hairspring and all that sort of stuff in here, it makes it uh, so that you can you can move this around. Now, if I took this clock here and I tried to carry it around with me and uh, move it, you know, <laughs> take it with me when I when I go to the desk, when I go uh, you know to the car, put it in the car and drive around with it, uh, because of all that movement, it, it would prevent this pendulum from swinging at a nice regular rate. So it's it's better uh, when you when you don't have a stable surface for your timepiece to have something like this with the uh, balance wheel and the hairspring because uh, obviously this is something that I can move, I can take it around, it's somewhat shock resistant and still basically keeps the same same time uh, accuracy as it would even if it were sitting there still. So uh, that again gets into some of the history of uh, timekeeping where you know clocks like this on a sailing ship didn't do as well when they started to come up with seafaring chronometers, <laughs> which, which had some more advanced engineering instead of a pendulum, then all of a sudden they solved all kinds of navigation problems, having accurate clocks in some of the old time uh, sailing ships. And that was, uh, well, it, timekeeping has changed the world. And uh, I, I just, I would like everyone to, to appreciate it because I just think it's kind of fun anyway. So anyway, I just thought it's, it's fun to boil it down to just two sources of power or just two sources of regulating the, the timekeeping. And uh, you'll find that across the spectrum in all your great mechanical clocks. And so um, for now, that's all. But I will be working on more episodes. So I hope you will join me again later for another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.